extreme values graphically. Recall from the previous unit that we analyzed graphs and discovered the locations of horizontal tangent lines. Look at locations A, B, and C. While they all share the trait that they have horizontal tangents, what is different about each of these points? Looking specifically at point A, we know at the peak here that occurs, the slope is zero. What do you notice about the slope on either side of A? Well, it turns out that the slope before A is positive in nature, and it's negative in nature after point A, where the slope is zero. Notice the difference at point C. We have a slope that's negative before point C. It's zero at point C, but then it's positive after point C. Due to this change in slope, around points A and C, we can observe that a maximum occurs when the slope changes from positive to negative, and a minimum occurs when the slope changes from negative to positive. And here are some definitions that we've basically discovered. A local or relative maximum is a high point on any interval relative to points around it. At this point, the slope changes from positive to negative, and the function changes from increasing to decreasing. We also have what's known as a local or relative minimum. It's a low point on any interval relative to points around it. And at this point, the slope changes from negative to positive, and the function changes from decreasing to increasing. It's also worth noting that a local minimum or maximum cannot occur at an endpoint. Graphs can also have more than one extrema. The highest maximum of a graph is called an absolute or global maximum value. And similarly, the lowest minimum value of a graph is called the absolute or global minimum. Together, these are called absolute or global extrema. Here's another way to think of these terms. An absolute maximum occurs at C if f of C is greater than f of x for all x in the domain. An absolute minimum occurs at C if f of C is less than f of x for all x within the domain. It's also worth noting that absolute maximum and minimum values can occur at endpoints. Let's return back to the function that we were examining before. This time we're going to look at x equals b. How does this function or curve behave around this value. We can see that the slope both before and after x equals b is the same. In this case, they are both negative. Therefore, no maximum or minimum will occur when there is no change in slope. While the slope or derivative at points a, b, and c is zero, we saw each had a different scenario occur. All of these locations are critical values of the original function. And a critical value or critical point is an x value on the interior of the domain of a function at which the derivative is zero or undefined. Extrema can only occur at critical values or endpoints if absolute. However, the presence of a critical value does not always guarantee extrema at those values. What does this mean? It means that critical values occur where the slope of the tangent line is zero. In other words, the derivative is zero or undefined. However, unless the slope of the tangent line switched from positive to negative or vice versa, there will be no extrema at those critical values. As we saw in the first graph at x equals b, there was a slope of zero, which provided us with a critical value. However, it was not a max or a min. The same can be seen in these two graphs. Both have a critical value at x equals zero, but only one has a minimum. Which one is it and why? The graph of y equals x squared has a minimum at x equals zero. Why? Because the slope of the function is zero at x equals zero, 
and the slope changes from negative to positive at x equals zero. In x cubed, we have a slope being positive on both sides of zero, so therefore the, the slope doesn't change. Therefore, it is neither a maximum nor a minimum in y equals x cubed. Now observe the following graph. Notice that the function contains a cusp at x equals negative 1 and another at x equals 2. Although the slope would not be 0 at these points, they are still critical values, and x equals negative 1 and x equals 2 are still considered extrema. Recall, critical values occur where the derivative is 0 or undefined. Now let's try an example. Label each of the blanks as local or absolute maximum or minimum. And then what do you notice about what is occurring at the star? Let's actually try it out. We'll first start off at x equals a. We have this lowest point on the graph, and that's referred to as absolute minimum. And absolute minimum values can occur at endpoints. So A is considered to be an absolute minimum. Now let's look at B. Notice to the left of B we have slopes that are positive, and to the right we have slopes that are negative. This yields a local maximum. Is it also an absolute maximum? No, not in this case, because we see a point later on that is higher than this one, so this is just a local maximum. Now let's look at point C. Before point C, the slopes are negative, and then after it are positive. This yields a local minimum value. And it's not the absolute, because at x equals a, it's lower than that. Now let's look at D. At D, we have increasing to decreasing. And when it's increasing to decreasing, we have a local maximum. Is it also considered to be the absolute maximum? It actually is, because it is the highest point on this graph. So we can also say absolute maximum. Now let's look at point E. At point E, it's an endpoint. And it's also not the lowest endpoint, so it's definitely not an absolute minimum. And now because local minimum have to occur from negative slope to positive slope, this doesn't have a positive on the other side because it's unknown. So we cannot label this as a local minimum either. So this is none. It matches none of the terms that we know about. And here are the solutions that we found, they are all verified. It's important to note that the absolute minimum can occur at endpoints, as well as absolute maximum values. And since point E is not the absolute minimum, we cannot label it as anything. And point D has both an absolute and local maximum value. Now let's look at our star. What do you notice about it? And what's actually happening at that star? Well around our star value that we have here, let's examine the slopes. We have positive slopes to the left of it, and we also have positive slopes to the right of it. So therefore, at this star value, the slopes do not change. They continue to remain positive on both sides. Therefore, there is neither a maximum nor a minimum at this value. And just reiterating, point E cannot be a local maximum or minimum since it's an endpoint, and it's also not the lowest point overall. Therefore, it's not an absolute minimum, and that's why it's labeled as nothing.